Hi, this is Richard Solomon from the Greek Jewish Synagogue of, of, of Lower Manhattan, the, the Western Hemisphere, North America, <laughs> and with the founder of the museum at the Greek Jewish Synagogue and Museum of New York, Isaac Dostas, who happens to be related to me. So, you know, this is like both a family reunion, a celebration of family, a celebration of heritage, and just something cool to put on the radio that's more about sort of where I come from, since we try to, in, this, in the radio show that we have, really highlight everybody. So this is a little insight to where we come from. So Isaac Dostas, welcome to Taking Care of Business on 88.1 FM. Thank you. I'm glad to be here in Taking Care of Business and in the Synagogue Museum on the Lower East Side of New York. Now, you... First of all, let's, let's go back in history. You were the person who helped found the museum part of the, the Synagogue and Museum. Correct. When was that, and what was the inspiration behind it? Okay, so I think it was 1997. I'm not good with years, but it was around there, 1997, 1998. I had gone to Greece looking for my own heritage, and I collected so many artifacts and notes and pieces of, of materials that we needed, uh, like family trees, um, that I could not contain it by myself. So I came to High Geni uh, here at the synagogue, and it was a day, it was a Saturday, with very few people here. And I said, hi, listen, I have this and this and this. I would like to create a museum to put this in and to start the, the support system for Romagnot Jewry. And little by little, after a lot of talking and a lot of sharing, they said yes. So it took me a year with artists to build the museum actually right here in the balcony where we are sitting. And so after the year was up, when we opened in May, I think, of 1998, maybe, um, we had a full house. We had more people here than we ever thought, 150 to 200 people mobbing. And, Richard, you can see how small this place is, and we were mobbed that day. Let's, let's, let's describe for a minute. Let me, I don't interrupt. Yeah. Let's describe where we are, because people are listening on the radio. Right. And they're listening on YouTube, because we don't really do audio on YouTube yet. What, what is this museum... What is the footprint of this museum uh, and synagogue, and how big is it? Okay, the synagogue is in, in uh, a tenement-sized uh, building, but not five stories high. It's only two stories high, and we are on the second floor of this tenement, for, to, say, you know, to say that. And what do, you, what do you say? What is this, 100 by 40? 40, yeah, yeah. that's usual. I think it's 40 feet across. So I can almost reach over <laughs> and touch the other wall. So that's how small this is. And that, this is where the mu museum originated from. So I need to go back for one moment because the day we opened, the day we opened, this man rushed to me through the, the mob of people. And I remember I was standing in the corner. I know I'm pointing, and you can't see it on the radio, but I'm pointing to a corner there. And this man rushed me and said, look, I'm, I'm of Greek heritage. I came from Yanina. I, I want to know about my family. Do you know anything about so-and-so and so-and-so? And I said, No. I said, I, I'm just putting the museum together. I don't know about family trees outside of my own family and yours. Right, uh, exactly. <laughs> right. So he said, oh, he said, I wanted to find out about so-and-so. I have forgotten his name, but he was the inspiration for my starting the family trees to bring all these people together. We, while I was the director here, we created about 250 family trees, which has since expanded with Marsha. And now in Yanina, where we live now, I've created another 50 to 75 family trees. So what I'm looking for now that we're on radio, there is a family I'm trying to get together, Kofino. I have four. Oh, I have a Kofino. Um, there you go. Esther Kofino was my, gra my great aunt. Well, you're going to have to tell me and more. And Morris Cofino was her husband. You're going to have to tell me more about this, Richard. Oh, this, see, see this, this is like the breakthrough <laughs> of radio. So, yeah, th that was the Cofinos. Um, I remember, I'll never forget this. I was a little boy, and my parents took me on Eastern Airlines, all right, Eastern Airlines, and we went down to Florida, and we went to Miami Beach, and this was like, I must have been 10 or 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And I saw, my mother said something like, oh, hi, Auntie. And I never, you know, I was like, Auntie, wow. And I saw this woman that was like the mirror image of my grandmother. Wow. Only with a better tan. Because <laughs> in Miami, they actually get sun. Yes, know? that's right. And, you know? And I see this woman, it was always known as Aunt Esther, because yeah. it was my mother's Aunt Esther, and it was Esther Cofino. Oh, my gosh. So, so, and as a little boy, I remember my grandmother really didn't write that well. 
Um, she had like a little bit of arthritis and stuff. So she yes, used to always make me write the letters to her sister. The, the letters always started out, my darling sister. And I was the scribe. And then I'm fine. I'm hoping you're okay. And she'd tell a little bit what's going on with the family. And then I guess my mother would write the envelope. And then somebody in my family, my mother, my father, would go to the post office and mail it. Oops, sorry. And, um, but yeah, but that was the Cofinos. I remember Morris Cofino was definitely... Okay, the reason yeah. I need to know more about that is because I have four Cofino families that I have uh, family trees in Yanina that I cannot fit anywhere else. I cannot find anything beyond their oh. mothers and fathers or grandparents. My mother for sure can help you with this. Well, so should I talk with oh, her? Oh, absolutely. Well, we'll do it okay. all three. Well, okay. Right. So, okay, so see, see this, is the, this is a good example of how this synagogue and museum kind of works. Yes. Because there's always a gathering. Yes. And there's always something bubbles to the surface, whether it's somebody's dress or a steamer trunk right. or the mortar and pestle that people use yes. to... Um, or the dress. Yeah, or right. the, uh, the, that, that was gotten from Yanina. Okay, what are we looking at when We're you say that? At, I know, yeah, that. That, that's a large dish that's to make uh, uh, pita and um, with cheese and whatnot or spinach. It's huge. It's, what would you say, about two feet? It's the size of a pizza pie. It's a, a large like pizza a large pie, one, right, yeah, a large yeah. pizza. But it has a Jewish star in the middle. And the person who came um, to see it bought two of them, one for himself and one for the synagogue museum. And I'm the one who sent that here to Marsha. Oh, wow. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And, 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 and the thing is that, we're, I guess we're skipping all around, but that's yeah. the beauty of unscripted radio. There's pictures, there's yeah. artifacts. Background, There's yeah. all kinds of things. And what, crown. Oh, yeah. What were the original things? That's, by the way, that's Marvin Marcus, our president. Hey, he passed right yeah. by us. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Marvin. <laughs> So what would you say were the original artifacts that you original remember? Original artifacts were the crowns that go on to the, the Torah. uh, Torahs. Right. Old, old um, taluses okay. that we found under the ark. Okay. Uh, many in bad condition, but some were ready to be saved. But they were made out of regular material, like your shirt oh, here. Wow. And uh, polyester? <laughs> <laughs> Close. And the squares were out of everyday material. With the, uh, what do you call these items? I'm sorry, the... Um, the str- Thank you. It's just, there's yeah, someone yeah. else who walked by. See, that, Thank you. This is the beauty of live radio. <laughs> <laughs> there were only four of them. One uh, here, one there, and on two of them on, on the square. One on each side. But they were just pauper kind of materials. And we saved them. We saved, I guess, maybe eight out of 20 because they weren't doing too well. Mr. Spielberg? Okay, Mr. Spielberg isn't here, but thank you, Morty. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, th- I'm so glad you were here today. Uh, by, the way, by, by the way, this is, this is a radio show, so that, this, is, this is about Isaac's movie. We just That's yeah. why the reference to Mr. Oh, Spielberg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Okay, no, that's good. Thank you. Hey, this is Jeff Matson, the Dark Star Orchestra, and you're listening to Richard Solomon on WCWP 88.1 FM. I'm Bill Moyer with a new program for public radio called Moyers & Company. It's a weekly hour of conversation with smart and committed people trying to make sense of our world. We'll talk about faith and reason, money and politics, war, media, and the arts. I hope you'll lend an ear and join the conversation at BillMoyers.com. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Here are some upcoming events from LIU Post School of Visual and Performing Arts. May 3rd, the Dance Theater of Harlem comes to the Tilla Center at 8 p.m. May 4th through the 8th, it's the 10th Annual High School Artists Exhibition from 5 to 7.30 p.m. at the Hillwood Student Art League Gallery. May 5th, check out Hair in the Musical at 7 p.m. at the Tilla Center. For more information, visit liu.edu slash post. The Gold Coast Public Library offers an interactive workshop on residential electrical fire safety, presented by Master Electrician and Engineer Stephen Bender. This workshop will be held on Wednesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. at the Gold Coast Public Library. For more information or to register, call 516-759-8300. The community calendar is a public service from your friends at 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Weekdays on WCWP. Great music is in the mix from 7 a.m. through the afternoon. Listen every weekday for our mid-morning talk walk. Get in the game with the Sports Wire at 6 and talk collegiate and professional sports. And spend your nights rocking out to the rock show at 7. 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. All right, so we're here today continuing our interview of Isaac Dostas, the uh, founding uh, museum director of the Greek Jewish, the Greek Jewish synagogue, 
and Museum of New York, known as Kehila Kedosha Yanana Synagogue and Museum. All right. Now, so for those who don't know, where, where, where in the world, if I were to Google Earth, see, yeah. if I were to Google Earth, yeah. Yeah, where would I find it? <laughs> oh, it's on uh, Broom Street, 280 Broom Street. It's been here since 1927, and uh, we're at the corner, almost at the corner of Broom and Allen Street. And it's only op- the museum's only open on Sundays from 11 to 4, I think, and the synagogue is open for Saturday services and High Holy Days Yom Kippur and uh, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. And things so like that. Uh, come and join us, now, whether I'm here or not. Okay, now you're actually in Yanni Na Yanni. I live <laughs> in the actual place that this museum and synagogue is named after. Okay, so if I were to Google Earth that place, where oh, would I where find we, it? <laughs> okay, so we are in the northwestern portion of Greece. There is a lake. If you find the lake in the northern western portion of Greece, that's Yanina, we're below. Um, uh, Albania, south of Albania, and east of Corfu, the okay. island of Corfu. So, so you live there now full time? I live there full time except for two months. Every two years we come here. Okay. And as a person who lives there, you're, you're actually reliving mm. your ancestors' mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. That's got to be fascinating. Well, what fascinates me is that some of the couples... But those ancestors happen to be my ancestors. Well, your ancestors <laughs> too, right. But with some so, you're, of the, so you're doing the, double duty. I know. Well, I walk four times. <laughs> <laughs> two for me, two for you. But um, the cobblestones are still pretty old there wow. in some of the places, and I'm quite aware that this is the cobblestones where our ancestors were, especially in the synagogue that's still there, the first synagogue within the Castro. The slate that they put on the flooring is still there. And so I walk those on the high holy days. I'm in there. And so it's very uh, affecting for me. All right, so let's, let's talk about what is life in Yanina like today? What's it like? Is There is a Jewish community. There's a small Jewish community. There's only 30 Jews left. Uh, after the war, as Marcia said during the showing of the film, uh, there were about 2,000 Jews in Yanina who were rounded up the evening of March 25th. 1944. 44, thank you for that. And um, of the 2,000 or so, um, only uh, 3%, 87% were killed. 3% returned. What happened to the other 10%? They were saved by the Greek Jews of Yanina and Greece. Not all of them in Yanina, because in Yanina it was 91% that perished. Wow. In Greece, 3% returned from the camps, 10% were saved by righteous. And if people come to the synagogue museum, before you go into the... The one in New York, right? The one in New York. Thank you, Richard. As opposed to the one where you are are, most of the time. In in here, in in Lower East Side of New York, as you go down into the basement, which will be the future Caffeneo, a Greek coffee house and learning center down in the basement, you will see plaques that we put up for the righteous the rescuers of Greek Jews in the country of Greece during the Holocaust. Now, now, so let's talk a little bit about Yanina a little further. Yeah. All right. First of all, when you talk about the the Greek coffee, like... (laughs) Yes. I love Greek coffee. Talk talk about Greek coffee and and is it how it you know it's made in the lambiku right yeah, yeah. and it's cooked. Yeah. Talk about that because that's uh, just a, well, it's a great brew. Okay, so you put hot water into this little briki. It's a small briki. What do you say? It's okay. It's a container made, made out of uh, copper, copper, aluminum, whatever. So no, but no, the authentic kind is copper. The copper. Right, I have yes. one that's made out of stainless steel. I got from Brooklyn. Yeah, forget it. I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throw it out, Richard. No, anyway, so you put hot water in there, and you just put a spoon of this coffee, and you let it boil until it almost boils over because it'll come to the top. You have to keep stirring it, and after you take it out, you leave it for a few moments until it calms down, and then you pour it into these mini cups, Okay. And uh, you drink it strong. You can put sugar in it. Nobody puts milk in it. You just put sugar in it as you need, as dark as you want to make it. But after you drink it, after you finish know this is the, the good cup, part. you turn the cup over, and now you leave it there for maybe 10, 15 minutes as you get the coffee grounds coming down, uh, the sediment, and then you read the well, co- that, that you, doesn't someone read it for you? No, you, I do the reading. You read your own fortune? I read, yeah, I read, oh, my, wow. I read it for other people. <laughs> so a cousin came to me from Argentina, a new cousin that I found, and we did that. And so before she went back to Argentina, I read the coffee grounds, and I said, you're in for a, um, a love affair. Someone in the very near future, you're going to have someone in your life, because she had no one at the time. 
Well, I just got an email from her maybe a month ago saying, Isaac, you were right. Someone is in my life now. I don't know when I'll get married, but I think within two years I'm going to be married. Wow. So I read that stuff. Mom taught me. Wow. Because okay. so, Grandma Clara, my grandmother, yeah. did the coffee reading. Because what we would do is she'd make the coffee. There was a little kid at the time. And then you take the cup, you turn it upside yeah. down, you let it sit. And then she would, in her Greek accent, she would read. Now, what's interesting is I had somebody on the radio as a guest the other day. Yeah. And I met her mother-in-law, who's from Athens. And I said, do you read the coffee grinds? And she said, oh, no, I don't do that. Ah. I'm like, oh, I, I, you know, I, need, I need coffee grind readers. Yeah, like, right. There's a short supply here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as a male, I, I don't know of any other male who reads these coffee grinds. Only females have done it, as far as well, I know. The, in, in, we're looking in at a picture. picture. We're looking at a picture, picture that was right. taken probably oh. in the 1950s on in, Avenue in, N in, in right. Brooklyn. Now, Brooklyn. I'll tell you who's in this picture, just for the audience out there. There's my grandmother. Your grandmother. Right. My great grandmother. Right. All right. My great aunt. Mm -hmm. um, let's There's see. Molly. Now. Molly's. That's a, probably an aunt of ours, a common aunt of ours. Right. My grandfather. Okay, this that's is my uh, uh, aunt, Mary L. Hydostis. Okay. She married my uncle. Right. There's your. There's and your. And that's my, my grandmother, grandmother Clara. Yeah. yeah. Can so. you see all that? Uh, well, th th they can't see. No, they can't see. <laughs> but it's kind of cool because we're reminiscing. This is so. my grandmother. Exactly. That's yeah, your grandmother. Mary, right over here. That's Mary. Right, and that's my grandfather. Yeah. And that's uh, Grandma Clara. She that's used to read the, the coffee, coffee grinds. Coffee. Now, what's interesting about Grandma Clara, she, she, during, I can say this now because the statute of limitations is passed, I'm still a lawyer, is that <laughs> during Prohibition and thereafter, she had a still, and she made her own Rocky in the house. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. And but, you know, we also found the house of Mary Elhai Dostas. We found oh, the where? house on, on uh, Crete. Oh, you found the house. Yes, yeah, I sent you pictures a long time ago. You got them somewhere. I got them. Okay, this is the good thing about, got, you know, email. Yeah, I got, no, not only emails. I sent it to you, actually, okay, photographs. I'll, but we found the house, and we ur urged you to come. So I'm still urging you to come. All right, when, when <laughs> you know, we, we had. When the we, babies. Uh, are all grown up, and right, we can show them yes. where the great-grandparents all originated. Before I die. No, no, you're going to live. <laughs> maybe, now, since you have, we're going to skip around a lot. That's the great thing about being unscripted. You can die because you have all these movies to make. No. Now, now you've made a whole bunch. So let's talk yeah. about that for a minute. Your oh. most recent movie, which was shown today at the Synagogue yeah. Museum, was called. Was called uh, it was called uh, the Lost Synagogue of Yanina. It was the second synagogue that the Jews built. There, it was an expanding community, and the Nazis did a good job in desecrating it, using animals in there, etc. And now, once the city said, "You have a choice. Can we take it over, and we'll build you?" Houses for the Jews returning from the Holocaust. The community said yes, and I live right on the spot where the synagogue was. And we have built a memorial to the lost synagogue of Yanina. But there's another film coming out. It's called Beyond History, My Father and the Greek Jews of Albania. And it's about most Greek Jews being lost to history, including my father. Explain that, because that's... that's it's such an important concept, and it's, it, you're kind of just making it very subtle. You, okay. you, during the lecture, which preceded this radio show, which was, if, if you missed it, you missed something good. <laughs> but you were talking about what it means to be lost in to history. history. Yes. And, and you, were, you were explaining how there's no records Correct. of your father Correct. in Albania. That right. he just, there's, he's not on the radar. Right. He's not recorded anywhere. And that 100 years from now, when all the people who are relevant who may remember him, could remember him, will all be gone, that there's no trace of him, that right. he's beyond history. Beyond history. But that seems to be a very common problem, As especially is. amongst the Jewish people. And especially amongst minorities, which we are. Exactly. We are a minor minority, the Greek Roman Yotes. Right, because we're, we're a minority within a minority. Within a minority, yes. exactly. So you just explained it, Richard. That's exactly my concept. The idea is, sooner or later, beyond memory, beyond memory, we become beyond history. Right, and this is all before digital imprinting yeah, right. and, and the everything. digital trade. So, so we have to now try to memorialize all of these things uh, before time exactly. beats us. Before our memory goes. Right. Before, because when our memory goes, who would think of doing a memorial for that second synagogue? Nobody. Well, well explain the movie. The movie is simply about what happened to the synagogue, what's there now, including a living space for the uh, returning Jews from the Holocaust, and what can be done 
to use the actual stones because we have the actual stones. This was a theatrical uh, build-up of the gate. The only picture we have was the of the gate of the second synagogue. So we put it. We did it with theatrical uh, materials, but the actual stones, which we were not allowed to use, are in the first synagogue. It's in their courtyard. And so I'm hoping, because of the film, that one day they will take these stones and rebuild it, replenish it right into the courtyard of that first synagogue. That's what I'm after. There's a hope that they're going to rebuild the ancient temple in Jerusalem, so maybe there's a hope to rebuild the (laughs) ancient synagogue of, you know, Yanina. I don't know how ancient this is, but you're right. Well, it's ancient for us. Yeah, Yeah. it's going to be ancient for us. So how, how many synagogues were there in total in Yanina? In Yanana, yeah. there was only two. But in all of Greece, there were 70. 70. Yeah. Seven zero. Okay. Of which there's now like 11. Okay. Of the, of the synagogues in Yanina, were any of them Sephardic synagogues no. or all Romanyot? Both of them were Romanyot synagogues. Okay. What was the difference in location between the two different synagogues? One was inside the, uh, the Castro, which is the fortress walls, and that was the paupers of Judaism, of Greek Judaism. That, that must have been our people. That's yeah. us. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> right. Outside. Yeah. The, the uh, second synagogue was just outside the walls. So I mean, just barely outside, just right? Just barely yeah. outside, second, two blocks away. We walked to the synagogue two blocks away. Now, which community did that serve? That served the... Um, the royal community, the, okay. the, the people who had more money. Is the pe- it was supposed to have been a very well put together synagogue, uh, as the film tells you, but it didn't matter. So if people want to buy the, the film, where would they go? Uh, Kahila Kadosha Yanana Synagogue and Museum. Talk to Marsha, 280 Broom Street. I don't know the phone number, but it's on... KJM, KKJSM.org. Exactly. There you you go. just did it. All right. And they have it. They have it here. Now, you have other movies that yes. you made. What are the other movies? The, the one I started telling you about was the, that's coming out now in a few days is Beyond History. Right. My father and the, Jew, the uh, Greek Jews. The Albanians. Albanian, yeah. The, the Greek Jews of Albania. Now, was that because the, the Yanina was so close to the Albanian border? No, that no because the Yanina and Albania were all part of the Ottoman Empire. Right, but and because so, of the proximity, though. Yeah, there was, yeah. yeah, right. There was no borders. It was just right. there. And so my f- grandfather went up there for business. My father and some of the other people were born there, uh, my, my family. And we found the house that my father lived. It's on a Jewish street. Wow. And so it's a, it's, it was just a wonder to be there. So we filmed in, in a- Albania. We filmed in, uh, in uh, Israel. We filmed in Greece, of course. And we filmed a little bit here at this synagogue here. Wow. Uh, are there any Jewish remnants left in Albania? Is there any Jewish community left in Albania? Yeah, a little bit in Tirana. Mm. But in other places, no. 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 And so w- w- tell me about Jewish life in Yanina for you. Like what, okay. you know, what, what, uh, what's the day-to-day existence? The day-to-day existence is very simple. Diana and I, my wife, we are writers or artists, whatever you call us, and we just do our stuff. It's a regular, everyday, it's a small community. I mean, total, all the Greeks, it's 120,000 people, of which we are only 30. But there's no, I mean, I have so many friends and people we associate with uh, in the Greek community. Uh, we go get fresh bread every morning, uh, the shopping is at the corner, grocery store. They do have supermarkets also. Um, it's just a very simple way of life. Diane and I do not have a, a television. We don't have a recording device. We don't have one of these over here that we're recording on. Uh, we don't have many things, but this is by choice for us. Everybody, <laughs> all the, the places we go to, all the homes, they have a television, and it's on while we're there. Excuse me, can you turn that down a little bit so we can talk? But it's always on. I think uh, there's a loneliness there, uh, and that's one way they keep things going. But it's background noise. Background noise. It's a very simple way of living, way of life. How is the Jewish community of Yanina actually organized? Is there like a... Yeah, we have a president, we have a vice president, we have three other members of the board, and there's the rest of us. And there's a meeting once a year, which sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't happen, and they make decisions on their own. They don't, I don't think they include too much of the rest of the Jewish community. But part of it is that we have elders there. I think nine of the elders are Holocaust survivors. So that's one-third of our community. 
uh, don't, uh, aren't as mobile as we'd like them to be. And most of us live in that complex of buildings which now are on top of where the second synagogue was. Only one or two live outside that area. I assume there's a lot of interest by Greek Jews from all over the world to come to Yanina to visit the current situation. No. No? No, because we are so far away from the current situation. Uh, the current situation is happening in Athens and Thessaloniki. If you're talking about the riots and all the stuff... No, no, I'm talking about t- no, no, like, like tourism. Like tourism. The, it's no, Athens, Thessaloniki. We're all the way on the west coast near Albania. If you really are interested in Yanina or perchance if you're tracking through it or trucking through it, then you'll stop there. But otherwise, we don't get many tourists. So, so it's a sleepy town. It's a sleepy town. I, what caused all of the immigration to the United States of the Greek Jews of Yanina? My own father, when they came with the family, was because of economics. There was, that was in 19... That's just before the First World War. He came in 1915, uh, just before Yanina was free... Uh, just after Yanina was freed from the Ottoman Empire. Um, but there was an economic crisis. They couldn't make a living there. So we had, there were two hordes of movement, one around that time, 1900 to 1920, and then the second one, of course, the Holocaust. Even in this community here in New York, we have Holocaust, Greek, Judeo, Holocaust survivors who have come in to join the community here from the 1950s, 1955 or so. Uh, Is the synagogue somewhat active in Yanina? Somewhat is a key word. Yeah, well, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because... It's only on high holy days that they open the synagogue, and now with the elders not being able to do as much as they did before in holding services, even less so. So when we have a, t- like when Marsha's group comes with a 20 or 30 people, th- we will open the synagogue and someone will read. Um, on high holy days, Yom Kippur, it's open because someone from Athens comes up. Um, Rosh Hashanah, maybe. This past Passover, nobody, it didn't open. Uh, the, the community is doing less and less. Two reasons. One, because of the aging of the Holocaust survivors. And the, and the economics? N- the economics, right. The second yeah. part is that uh, the Jews there are being very uh, integrated into the Greek community. And so many of us, including myself, although Diane is not Greek, but uh, have married Greeks. And so they've disim- dissem- dissem- they've assimilated, assimilated. Assimilated, yeah. assimilated into the rest of the community. So little by little, uh, we're not as, as strong as we used to be in our uh, beliefs. As to the economics, yes, that's not a good thing at all that's happening now, the crisis, they call it. Uh, for us, for Diane and I, it's not such a big problem because in our retirement, we get our Social Security from America. So, so far, we're doing okay, although prices are going up and it's still more difficult. But living within the Jewish community, we have a lower cost on our rent. That's the only thing that's low there. But we're still sufficient with our acting community uh, monies. Now, what what is the food like in Yanina? Ah, ah, ah. Gotta be great, because nah. you know, the food that I grew up on ah. was just paradise. Yeah. I mean, all, I know we mentioned the coffee before, but... No, no, the food. But talk but, about but the I food. Know, well, yeah. I don't have to talk about it. You just did it. No, that's no, it. no you just people, said... No, they, they, <laughs> these people, the people right here, they... People, okay, when I was a kid... They're hanging the, on, just yeah. trying to wait. <laughs> when, when I was you know, a child, that's what we had. We had the Greek food, of course, my mother and father, both from Greece. Uh, but there's... Every Friday, we used to have fasulia, fasulia. fasulia bean fasula, soup. Bean soup. Yeah. Uh, oh, wonderful stuff. Now, uh, what is it made out of? It's What's made of beans, a little bit of vinegar, oil, uh, tomato sauce, tomato paste, uh, some spices... Um, and then let it boil until the, the beans are so soft they melt in your mouth. That was Friday night, either with a piece of meat in the soup or with a piece of chicken in the soup. Now, did that, was that accompanied by rice? No. Okay, because I remember no. rice with the fusilli. No, no. That's, you know, that could have been no. an American addition. That could have been like, you know. <laughs> no, the other thing is... Did they yeah. use rice in Greece? Yeah, but that's the Sephardic side. Ah, yeah. okay. Sephard, Sephardim, like in Passover, yeah. we never had rice. If you were Sephardic, you would have rice along with the Passover matzahs and all the other okay. things. Okay, but the other thing we used to do was a cheese called Sonia. Oh, I love Kazonia. Yeah. Oh my God, I love Kazonia. So I make them, and wow. so um, how do you make them? Okay, so there are four kinds of cheeses you put in there. My mother used to do you cottage put, cheese. You put four different four cheeses inside. Okay. Inside, yeah, you mix it. Uh, it's a cottage cheese, farmer cheese, cream cheese, cottage cheese. 
And, and feta cheese, no, that cottage and farmer, uh, cottage and... Wait, uh, cottage? Well, cottage? Let's start it again. Uh, cottage, cottage cheese, which is like pot cheese, right? Right. Feta cheese, yeah. I didn't mention. There's a uh, farmer cheese yeah. and cream cheese. Okay. Okay? You mix them all together. Yeah. Uh, I have the recipe if anybody wants I, it on the radio. There you go. Uh, uh, email uh, tcbradio, wcwp at yahoo.com, and I'll forward it to you. Okay. Okay. And um, then you make the dough, a very simple dough. You put them all the spices and eggs and matzo meal to make it thick. Put it in the fridge for about an hour so it gets a little harder, to, easier to use. And then you make them into half moons and then you flute the edges. And my mother used to call me the best flutist. And I thought she meant musically. No, no, I'm only kidding. But I was the only flutist also. I only, nobody else did it. So we did that and I wrote a story about that. And Richard, if people want that, it's a story about how my family might have used Calzonia on their way to the Roundup because the Roundup came, in Yanana came on a Sunday. Wait, 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 this is, let, let, let's call what it is. This was the, this was the uh, forcible expulsion by illegal arrest of the Jewish people for their eventual murder. Yeah. So let's and call so it what in, it was. In yes. Yanana, yes. in Yanana the, 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 it was on March 25th. But that was a Sunday. So usually cheese calzonia or spinach calzonia were made on a Friday. And because of the Sabbath, you'd have hand, it's a hand food. Yeah, no, it was really, it was just, it was, a it, was like, it was like fast food almost. Exactly, yeah. a pickup. And so we think that many times, because the Nazis told them, take whatever you can, held hand, hand, hand held. And so we think the families might have taken um, these cheese calzonias with them as eating. So I tell the story about that, and it's called Cheese Called Sonia. But that leads me into one other thing, Richard, is that uh, one of my next books is about recipes and history. Oh, I love using that. Using the idea of Cheese Called Sonia, that's my first one. We, that's all I've written. It's been published in America. Uh, and what they, you know, how it f fit into history. Another one is about Kaluria. Do you remember Kaluria? I love Kaluria. Yeah, the, the my grandmother. Sweets. My grandmother made with twists. Well, there was like the S shape. The twist, S shape is one, and then there's the, the circles. Circles is another yes. one, and then the twists also. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the braided. The yeah, braided, yeah, oh right. yeah. yeah. So my mother used to eat those while playing cards and drinking a little coffee. Uh, no, it was chai at night. Was it, it was chai tea? Tea at night. Yeah. Really, I didn't know at that. At night, no, that, my mother wouldn't we have put, coffee. Was that was that a Greek thing? Or was that an American thing? I have thing? no idea. But uh, chai is big in Greece, so I don't know. Today? That. Today. Wow. I wonder if so, it was big back then. Uh, well, they have mountain tea. They, use, they have mountain tea. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. You know what? I went to a place in Whitestone where I live, and they gave me Greek mountain tea. It was actually quite it's good. A, With a little bit good. of honey, I was awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think that... But now I explain the game they used to play. It's called Casino. And I'm finding out how the game was played. My mother played it a certain way. I found other rules. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing these recipes with a history. Not the history of the recipe, but a history that is... I'm calling the Food Channel. <laughs> <laughs> I think, so I, think. I, have, I have these stories uh, that I'm connecting. And with Diana's help, we're putting this together into uh, a book, we hope. You know, individual stories. What books... Let's, let's talk about this for a few minutes. What books have you published so far? Because I know you have a few. There's like 10 Gold Medals. That's the only one so far. We're in the process of publishing. So let's, talk about, let's talk about 10, 10 Gold Medals. What was 10 Gold Medals about? I know gold, what it's about, but okay, 10, to these people. 10 Gold Medals, Glory or Freedom. My uncle Isaac Cohen won 10 Gold Medals in the state competitions of Greece, uh, in the Yanina area, actually. And during the Holocaust, he refused to go into the synagogue to be counted and taken in, in the result of it. And so he went underground, and with help from various people, the Greeks did help, and he would give a medal to everyone who helped them. And it was the child, my cousin, who's still alive, he would hold, keep the medals for the father, for his father, my oh, uncle. Wow. So, and finally, the medals all disappeared. I'm, you know, they were given out. So there was, uh, I had to change the ending of the story because in the ending of the story, one medal comes back when they finally make it to Israel. Oh, and wow. that's the story. Okay, so that's 10 gold medals. That you right. can buy that. That's on public. That's right, it here. You can buy here. that at kkjsm.org. Right. Come to the synagogue. Now, you, I know you had some movies. There was, yeah. It was nothing, it was everything. 
It was, uh, that's right. It was right. nothing, uh, that's a history of our Greek heritage of Yanina. Talk uh, about that. What, okay, so. What was that made and what oh, was that Oh, that was about? made, oh God, Richard. I think I have a video of that. I think it was on you video. Did? Okay. Yeah, yeah I think it's it on yeah, video. It's, yeah. Well, that's what they call all my films. Yeah, it's on video. No, no, that was real video as opposed to digital. I think. No, I think it was on digital. Was it digital? Yeah, okay, it was digital. Okay. okay. Doesn't matter. But I think that was made in uh, 2002, maybe. Um, and that's a story about Greeks during the Holocaust. That's it. That's all it was. Simply. Oh, it wasn't called. It was. That was a friend of mine. This one was called. Uh, uh, wow, Greek Jews and the Holocaust. But there was a t title to it that I cannot remember. Oh, well, that's what we have editing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Marcia has the list of of all the films I made. Uh, I made a first one about um, um, a small film about seven minutes about uh, Never Again it was called, and uh, it was about the Jews' uprising. People think we walk to our graves uh, in the Holocaust, which is totally untrue, and what Jews did, uh, not only Greek Jews, but all Jews, stood up and fought back and made a difference, and not everybody was killed uh, so sheepishly as people are told we were. So that was my first film. That won an award in the Brooklyn Film Festival. Oh, wow. So um, we did that. I, 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 Richard, I'm too old to remember all the films. Well, we don't need to. Not that's that why we have. That's, that that's why we have ISBN. So <laughs> yeah. Not that I. I, rem I do have a. Wait a minute. There. I have a, a, a website. It's What's called the website? Uh, Act One Presentation. No. Oh, no. Oh, that's Act the one. email. Okay. Act One Presentations dot com. All right. Now the it's a number one, right? Yeah. The number Act one. Number one. Act One, one Presentations dot com. And if they look at that, if they choose, they'll see the rest of the films that I've forgotten. But anyway, I think there's about seven or eight films that we made, and there's a book there. We're still working on a second book called Greek Salad. I remember you talking yeah. about this at we some still, point. We found an illustrator. Now we're working on a publisher in Greece. So we're doing that. Wait, wait. I know what Greek Salad's about, but I remember you, you tell the story. Okay. I think I interviewed you in 07 about this on the radio. Oh, God. Well, it's still in the process. Uh, this is about all the vegetables that go into the Greek salad and how they're fighting that they're the most important element in the Greek salad. No feta cheese. I'm the most. I'm the, the diva, the olive oil, the peppers are fighting, the green and red peppers, everything. And finally, when they're cut up into the salad itself, they, oh, how are you? Where were you? I wish we could play a little more together. <laughs> it's good for the idea of we are all people. We, are, we can get together and we can share the earth. And in the end, it also has a recipe for Greek salad. How's that? Now, what is, what is, a, what is the, if you go to Greece, what is actually in the Greek salad there? That's what I'm telling you. Uh, pepper, the green pepper or red pepper, uh, feta cheese, of course, olive oil, olives, tomatoes, um, uh, salad, not, also, not always salad, okay? Uh, uh, cucumber? Cucumber is right. Yeah. That's about it. And uh, um, um, lettuce. No, possibly lettuce. It depends on where you are. Right, because I've been to some Greek restaurants in no, a story no, where they have yeah. no... I included no, yeah. lettuce in the... Yeah. I actually like it better without. Okay, well, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Your choice. All right. so, and some uh, spices. All right. Let's jump back. Onion, what? I forgot onion. Oh, onion. Oh, yeah. Onion. What kind? The Spanish onion? Yeah, no, the uh, red onion. The red onion. Yeah. When you're eating... Where, okay, which is talk, really purple. Which is purple. <laughs> so, all right, let's... let's I, I, I can talk to you for hours on this, so... Uh, this is 88.1 FM, WCWP, Richard Solomon, taking care of business, uh, WCWP.org and TCBradio.com. And we're talking with Isaac Dostic, Do Do Dostis, who is the founder of the Greek Jewish Synagogue and Museum of New York, who now currently lives in Yanina, which is where our ancestors, including our mm -hmm. common ancestors, uh, all uh, were, were from. That's their origin. Okay, so like, we, you go back to the food. We, we talked about Faslakia and Kaludia and right. stuff like that. But what other foods do you eat on a, on a regular basis? Regular like, what basis. Are, what are the staples? The staples. Fresh bread. That's the staple. Get that every morning. Yeah, every morning. The, you cannot believe the, the, how, you know, what Greek bread does to us. But then Faslakia is the st string beans in tomato sauce. Okay? We get a chicken. We get avgolemono soup made out of uh. chicken, of chicken pieces, Rice, lemon, and um, uh, uh, eggs, yeah. and uh, I don't make that. But our neighbor continuously feeds us. This is Stella Cohen. Continu who wrote the cookbook? Who wrote the? Did, did she do a cookbook? No, no. no. 
Uh, somebody did, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. That's Stavrolakis did the cookbook. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a guy. Yeah, he's that's the, another yeah, one, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, he's a guy. But Stella yeah. Cohen is our neighbor, calls us every few days. Isaac Elado, come over. I have something for you. Should I bring some uh, pans? Nah, yes, bring some pans. <laughs> I go over there, and she'll give me some of the uh, Avrolemino soup, which we love. Diana loves it even more than I do. She'll bring, give us some um, uh, squash. Squash. Cut squash with a little bit of tomato and garlic. Yeah, exactly. oh, I, love, oh, I love that, yeah. That's another staple of ours. What is that called? The uh, cut squash. Is there uh, a name yeah, for that? Uh, uh, yeah, there is. Why do you bring up these questions? <laughs> because that to... my job is to ask <laughs> questions <laughs> for the radio. Because they can't ask, I, I ask the for them. I, know, <laughs> I can't think. Uh, 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 I, I can't think of it. How uh, is that for Cut you? squash. Cut right. squash. Anyway, so that's most of it is with tomatoes. Then there's a great recipe for scrambled eggs with tomatoes and uh, um, feta cheese that they do. Uh, it's just a wonderful recipe. That's another thing we make. So that's what we do. I, I definitely see a cookbook in you. Yeah, there is. This is what I'm... I've got yeah, 11 I stories yeah. with the elements of what we're cooking, with the actual recipes and where they come from. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, that, I, just, I, I want to le- give a hats off to Diana, who's patiently... Sitting on the other side, the 40-foot side. <laughs> No, we, we're, we're, still, we're still rolling. We're still we're rolling. rolling. Yeah. This is going to go on radio, so <laughs> just hang in there. All right. So are you ever going to do a documentary of, of what is the day-to-day existence in Yanina right now to capture it before it's lost? But funny that you should bring this up because in the recent past, I've thought of my own demise, honestly and easily. Well, we all do. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's why you have to do wills and stuff like it, that. Yeah. Right. Wills? No, I, I made one. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I thought of why not a tour book, in a sense, a guidebook of how the Jews of Yanina were taken to the Roundup area. And within that move to the Roundup area, what was there at that time? What did they see? Through maps, I would do the drawings to get them to where they're going, then see what's there now, like the synagogue, the uh, monument, uh, the clock tower that everyone remembers, uh, and then some stories of Holocaust survivors and also what's there now so that when we're gone, because honestly, I give all the tours that as people come from America, they contact me, I go over, I give them all that I know, and then Diana and I are going to do an audio that will be included in the book. Oh, that's so great. So that if they don't go to Yanina and they are Yenotis or others, they can listen to the recording and go through the book as a live well, person. Well, what I try to do with some of the radio shows is I actually try to preserve some of the Greek Jewish history, food, culture, sure. events by having periodic radio shows. You know, we captured one on the CD that we produced uh, that Marsha has here at the same. Just a shameless oh, yes, plug. Yes, I know, I have yeah. it. I have it. Right. That, that just for the people out there listening, if you actually go to Amazon, it's out there too, and it's at the synagogue. But that's actually. We're, we're trying to get the word out about the Greek exactly. Jews because we're all over the place. There's, there are Greek Jews. And now, you have relatives in Israel? Yes. Okay. They probably are related to me, too. Who are these people? They're Cohen's, basically. Okay. Uh, my mother's family, all of my mother's family went to Israel except my mother, who came to America on a prearranged marriage. So all the Cohen's are there. And now it's, you know, has expanded yeah. a lot. And the Dostases came here. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Now, I know that on my father's mother's side, there were some people who I believe survived the Holocaust, and they settled in Haifa. So, yeah, I, no, I, Haifa, I think, Haifa I think th- was the original place, because when my uncle, in this 10 gold medals book, when he comes, he comes to Haifa first. And so uh, and okay. that's where they were. And then they went down to... Uh, uh, not Athens, uh, Tel Aviv. Right. And they lived all around Tel Aviv uh, before they expanded. Now, is there a Roman Yote community? Yeah. Where? Uh, there's a Roman Yote community, community out of um, one of the islands, which is Zakynthos. It's not out of Yanina. Uh, out of Zakynthos when the Nazis took that over in 1943 after the Italians left the war, they put a sign up on the synagogue there. We went to it uh, in Israel. But the sign in Zakynthos was that uh, nobody is allowed. This is verboten. You're not allowed to walk in there. When the earthquakes came later, which involved Zakynthos, the Jews, as they moved en masse to Israel, Tel Aviv, 
they took that tablet with them, and now it's in front on their synagogue, oh, wow. right si- outside of uh, Athens, pro- uh, Athens, Tel Aviv proper. Do you know the name of the synagogue? No, but I know it's on Gimel Street. Okay, it's in Gimel Street in Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv. Right, so it can't it's be that an many. It's old yeah. section, the immigrant section of Tel Aviv. Wow. And this is a, a Roman Yot synagogue? A Roman wow. Yot synagogue. Now, do you know, the same? Just like this? Yeah. Do the, 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 the Roman Yot synagogues that you have visited, are they all architecturally similar? Yes, they and are. The arc what, are the, what are the common themes? Okay, the Ark is usually uh, towards Jerusalem, although we couldn't do it here. And the Bema is over on the other wall. Now, this place, they couldn't put the Bema on the other wall, so they put it in the center. And people think, oh, it's got to be Sephardic. It wasn't. But the doorway was at the, <laughs> the, the other side. There's so the New York one. City building code. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The other thing is the U-shape of the um, balcony. The women's section is in a U-shape usually, not always. But upstairs. Usually, upstairs. Segregation. That's the Romagnot, as well as Sephardic as well. Uh, but those are the basic things. And downstairs we have the, uh, the, the seating for the men were in rows. But because we are so small, we only have two rows, and then we have the bima in the center. But the rows are what's typical. When you, when you come to Yanina, Richard, and you do a show from there... Live from Yanina. Live from Yanina, <laughs> you will see the actual uh, rows and, and the synagogue itself. Now, I saw pictures that, were, uh, that some, a member of the community uh, sent to me of the inside of the synagogue, and it was sort of like there's benches and then there's like, uh, I guess, smaller benches, I guess, for children? It was, like, designed... There were. On the edges, you have small benches. Whether for children or not, I don't know. But the children's section was all the way on one side of the synagogue there. So if I were the uh, the bima, let's say, on the left side was the children's section. And that's... How we know that is because the hooks are very low where they used to have their... Oh, for their coats. coats. But they did that. They tried doing that. They were... The kids were there, and were the, um, the rabbi used to teach them there, but they dissolved that because it wasn't working. Is there, is there any um, Jewish museum in Yanina? No. At all? No. The, the synagogue is just a synagogue, not a yeah. synagogue and museum. I offered that. I mm. offered that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, did they? All right. Well, and of course they can't listen to the show because they don't listen to radio or TV or <laughs> computers. <laughs> no, that's right. They don't. <laughs> I remember you telling me that. I had to send you something by cassette for the people out there because none of them have uh, digital equipment. Exactly. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty wild. And that's still true to this day. So most of the elders don't have any. They, and we give them some. Somebody gave them a, a disc player, but they don't use it. It's just up in the closet somewhere. Collecting dust. Collecting oh, wow. dust. Um, is that true of all of Yanina or just the Jewish community of Yanina? For what? The, the very sort of old way of doing it. No, things. it is. It's a conservative space. Okay. It is. So there's not a lot of CDs and things like that? No, for around. the younger generation, yes. But Yanina, I mean, all of Yanina and Greece have the lowest amount of CD players in all of Europe. Wow. Maybe because we have a small population, but percentage-wise, we're still, I mean, the reading public, only 24% of Ju- uh, not Jews, of Greeks, 24% read books. And so what do they do? There's mostly like newspapers. radio. Oh, I Ra- see. Newspapers, tel- like I said, television's always on. So uh, 24%. There's only one library for 120,000 people. And now I know why. Right. <laughs> and, and before you leave, you should probably put the CD in that library. <laughs> that wouldn't help. <laughs> well, maybe in 100 years yeah, <laughs> when well, they catch up. English, they, have, they won't even learn English. They don't, they don't know English well. Wow. Well, I remember because we were trying to reach a common answer or a common relative of ours or mine. And I remember, like, we had to do it all in Greek. Yeah, yeah, and I don't really know that much Greek. Yeah. I just know a couple of the food uh, learn, names. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. you'll learn Yasu and all that. Yeah, well, I, know the, the, I know the basics. I mean, yeah, the basics. I mean, I could, I could carry my day in a Greek restaurant in, order, in terms of ordering food, but that's it. That's it. I, I can't fake it. I can't fake my way to anything else. Right. <laughs> so have you been to the Greek Jewish Museum in Athens? Yes, I have. What's it like over there? Most of it is Yanina. Is it really? <laughs> the reason is... Because nobody wants anything in Yanina. No, 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 no. What <laughs> happened was the, the head of the, uh, the director there is from Yanina, Zanette Bettino, who's in my... Oh, is, my is, she, is she a relative of Ralph Bettino and the Bettinos from here? 
No, okay. not that I know of yet. Okay. Uh, we just got our DNA testing done, and we're oh, fine. Oh, talk about this. There is a project underway in the synagogue yeah, right. for people to test yeah, their DNA. Uh, five or six uh, Yenotis did the DNA, including myself, but we could not fathom how to get into the system to find out who we're related to. So somebody very nicely in England said, give them to me, and I'll do it for you and put it into plain English. So he has it now. I had at least 20 to 25 emails trying to get through to these people. Couldn't. And somebody even asked me, two of the people asked me in America, are you related with someone? I said, I don't know. And until I get my results in another two weeks, three weeks, because the elders in the community in Yanina did it on my say-so, and said, okay, and now we're trying to find out how we're related. I've, this Stella Cohen that makes me food, I found out that we're fourth cousins. I don't through, know how Through the yet. DNA or through, through the DNA? Through the DNA. And I don't how do you how. find that through DNA? I don't know how. That's what I, I wow. can't get into yeah. it. Oh, I wow. can't do it. That's why you should do the DNA and find wow. out. Wow. So that's what we're finding out. That's a new project there. You're right. So little by little, we are expanding our connections. So back to the Greek Jewish Museum in Athens. Yeah, what, we what's to, in there? What's in there? A lot of uh, artifacts uh, ab- about all of Greece. Thessaloniki has its own museum as well with artifacts and stuff. In Thessaloniki. In Thessaloniki. Right. Those are the two museums that we know. But it's a wonderful, wonderful museum in Athens and the people there are wonderful. How big is the Jewish community of Athens right now? Athens, it's about a, a about 5,000? No, no, no. Nowhere close. It's about 1,500. Oh, wow. That's all. Yeah, that's all. Uh, Thessaloniki, the second largest, is about 900 to 1,000. Then we have all the small areas. Corfu has about 90 Jews. Halkis has about 90 Jews. Those are the... Er- oh, Larissa has about 500 Jews. That's you think that they would, the, the Jewish communities would use the Internet to connect to each other? You know, because... It, don't ask me. You're asking the wrong person no. about Internet, because I'm just into the 19th century now. Right. <laughs> I had the horse deliver the CD. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Right. I remember it was that white horse who came by the house. Now, I remember my grandmother telling me that every house had a donkey back, back in the day. I don't know. We don't did, have you hear, did you hear any of those stories no. from any of the people? There? No, but donkeys are being phased out little by little. Um, uh, machinery are taking place. So there's an extinction possibility for the asses that they used <laughs> in, the co- in the countryside. And that's a big story. Wow. Um, what, what, what can we see down the road in terms of creativity from you? Well, this next film that's coming out, uh, you know, Beyond History, uh, a book about the tour, tour book. Oh, I, I love the tour book. Yeah, I think it's a necessity. That's what's next. And I'm raising money for that, Richard. I'm raising money. Okay, if, for if, people want to ra- if people want to participate in that, where would yeah. they, where they At, go? make out checks to Act One presentations? Uh, j- uh, yes, that okay. too. P.O. Box five seven five, West Long Branch, New Jersey zero seven seven six four. Now and just put on it somewhere. Put on it, Oh My Yanina, because that's the name of the book for the tour. That's the tour. That's the tour. You know, it's one of the things I've read in terms of technology is that in the future they're going to have museum tours where as you pass by with your cell phone and you push a certain button, the audio will come in through the earpiece of your cell phone. So maybe what you want to think about maybe doing is on the actual physical places, you know, embedding it somewhere so that when people are walking by with their cellular telephones, they could actually walk the actual tour itself. That's what I expect. But I don't know if I can do it that way, but... All they need to do is put on what they need to put on, and then this will be an actual walking tour. Right. You, should be, you should be opposite the tower right now. If you're not, wait. Shut this off until you get there. Okay, you're there? Good. Okay, now on your left, you'll see this. On your right is so-and-so and so-and-so, and in front of you is where the roundup took place. Who did you lose in your family to the Holocaust? Whoa. I lost 52 of my family to the Holocaust. Wow. Wow. Um, many of them from the Cohen side of the family. My oldest aunt and my oldest uncle died in the Holocaust with their families. Uh, five they didn't uncle. die. They were murdered. They were murdered. Okay. Yes, they were murdered. Yeah. Well, we don't have to bring that up all the time. We I know do. It. Okay. I do. You know why? Because I think when they say we, you know, it, 
It's sort of like we have to call it what it was. Okay, but how many times? I don't know. Well, on the radio no, no, all the time. For, for me, all okay, the time. Yeah, okay. So anyway. Because I lost, I, you know, I lost people too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Well, that's my family. What right. are you talking well, about? Well, no, on, on my father's father's side, I lost some people. Le- yeah. Solomon's on the Solomon? Uh, yeah, on the Sol- uh, Bachor Solomon was a... Bachor, yeah. Uh, and his wife. Firstborn, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then on my father's side, uh, 20. So that's... Um, a lot of people. A lot of people. A lot of people. Some survived, thank goodness. And 16 were saved by righteous. Right. And those are righteous Greece. people, yes. Yeah, and that needs to be said. Do you have photos of any of the people who yes, perished? Yes, I do. And where, do, do you have them posted anywhere? No. I don't post anything, Richard. It's only be- because of you well, that all this happens. Well, we, gotta, we, we, we need to <laughs> You're post pushy. it. You're pushy, Richard. I have to be. I'm pushy because... <laughs> no, I, I, we, we have them in the films, and I have them in my own albums, and I have them in my files. I collect files of families, including myself, because I found someone found the the tombstone of my grandmother, who died here in, in America, in New York. And who was your grandmother? Uh, Esther Dostis, Esther Besso Dostis. Okay. A friend of mine came from New Jersey, saw was looking for her family, saw this, took a photo, and sent it to me in uh, Greece. I said, "My God, that's my that's my grandmother's tomb." So little by little, I collect all these things. I don't know where they're going to come here sooner or later. Yeah, but, yeah. All be and you know what? Uh, it, it, this is a great repository uh, for all right. that. And when we say here, it's at the Kahila Kadosha Yanina Museum, and Museum, and Museum, 280 Broom Street, yeah. uh, KKJSM.org. Right, exactly. Before we close yeah. this show, because yeah. it's been an action-packed show, and we have to, and and and, and no, no. security is so telling us. Okay. No, we can't. Oh, no, we can't. Okay. We can't. Hey, this is very, <laughs> by the way, that's, that's, that that's is, Andrew. That's Andrew Marcus, by the way. The synagogue would not be what it Working is today to without him because he's a, yeah. he's, it's a team effort over here. It, so. it is. It is. And you know what? He does a great job during the services. Thank you. you know? And not only that, he's a smart boy. <laughs> he didn't hear that. <laughs> he knows it. He knows it. In closing. So in closing, um, Obviously, people should visit Yanina to see their heritage. Of course. People should read your books and your senior movies because they're, they're r- rare treasures, and they are. Thank you. And um, they should I'd come. Come to the museum in New York. Right. Um, I know that there's a lot of resources on kkjsm.org, including right. like the tombstones in Yanina. I think there's some, they, they have some pictures of the tombstones. Uh, you can find out a lot about your Greek Jewish heritage. Yes. Uh, there and if people want to look you up but uh, in, in Greece how do they get in touch with well, you well the email for me not not the uh, not the website, website but the email email is act one presents at optonline.net dot net. Okay. so it's uh, the number one remember act one is the number one but if you write to me I'll get back to you I will do things for you but if it takes a lot of research I charge because that means I have to go yeah, into the right. archives I have to do all those things but if they want to come I'll give them a tour. I'll sit with coffee with them. I'll show the them Greek coffee we talked about at the top of the show. For them. For me, I'm not. No, no, I take Nescafe. Coffee. No, it's too much for me. My stomach doesn't allow it. Oh. Right stomach? Yeah, my stomach just talked. Uh, what, what would you say was the most significant part of the Greek Jewish culture that you carry with you every single day? Is it the food? Is it the spirituality? Is it the history? Yeah. Because there's so much going on. Uh, it, it's, it's the feeling of being part of an ongoing community. Like, before me, all the things that we have talked about. And then after me, not that we, we don't have children, but after me, there is this that we've started here. The, I know the community there will be more open in Yanina, little by little, to do some of the things they need to do to open it up to the rest of the world. Right now, it's a very conservative area. It's a closed area. People are still afraid. Um, are they are they scarred by ho- the Holocaust? Yeah, yeah, they still are. When you go to the synagogue there in the Castro, there's no sign there. There's nothing there that tells you for information. Call so and so. When you go to the Jewish office, there's no sign there. It says we are open from so and so and so and so. No sign. You have to know it. And you have to know, like, Shecky sent me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, right, exactly. You know, the small story. When we first went to Yana, the very first time, and I met Samuel Cohen, who was taking care of the synagogue, I said, uh, I want to see the synagogue in my broken Greek. He said, why? I said, well, I'm a Greek Jew from, uh, from America. What's your name? There was always this idea of why are you coming here? What do you, want? Do you, want? What what do you want? want? What do you want? <laughs> but, Richard, thank you for this. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's do it again from Yanina. 
Uh, and New Jersey. And New Jersey, <laughs> and New Jersey also, right. Exactly. But Yanina would be good. All right, this is Richard Zalman, WCWP 88.1 FM. Thank you for listening. Whoa!